Our next workshop, we are one of the only hands-on building workshops in the entire U.S. It's going to be May 13th through the 15th, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hang with the pros, build, design, three days long, tour tiny houses inside a tiny house building facility, tour a tree house, and more. Hey, what's up? I'm Deke from RelaxShacks.com. Back with Mike Bedsall. That wasn't a good shoulder slap. Sorry. Right. Take three. Back with my boy, Mike, right, right. Mike Bedsall from uh, Tiny House Chattanooga. Thanks for letting us back into your tiny house. I appreciate it. Here at the Monroeville Home Show. Correct. That's a mouthful. Correct. Um, the reason I want to come back to do another video is to highlight the bathroom, which I think is one of the cooler bathrooms in the tiny house scene right now. Because oh, nice. by amenities and, and by layout, it just offers so much. And the other video we had a full tour of the house, we kind of just touched upon the bathroom, but I wanted you to give us kind of a retour, just focusing on the crapper. No, the, you know what you got going on here, because it's, okay. it's, it's, yeah. it's very different than a lot of the tiny house bathrooms you see out there. So uh, if you want to take the lead. Yeah, please. All right. I'm just going to watch and try to keep well, my... When we come this sure. way, obviously we have our sliding barn door to keep it private. There's a lock on the inside, so you can lock it up. Over here, we have our washer-dryer combo. Washes and dries, of course. Underneath this particular one is a water tank in this layout for fresh water. All right, on this side, over here, is more of your storage. Kind of your taller storage. You can actually take out the shelf, hanging stuff like that. Uh, of course, you got three drawers down below. Plenty of room in here for all kinds of various things. Right now, it's got our home show stuff in it currently. Taking up all our beautiful space. That's quite a bit of storage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah the drawers a, down below. Two feet wide, absolutely. Yeah. Of course, all the drawers do open. You know, two feet wide. Whisper glide drawers. Whisper glide. That's right. Keep it, keep it smooth. On this side, you can see our nature's head compost toilet. All right. Over here, inside here is our propane water heater. We did it like this to jut it out the space so it's out of the way. So it doesn't take up your space inside, but it's also inside the conditioned space. So the pipes will not freeze. Mike, back on the nature's head toilet, you want to talk about that a little bit more? A lot of people, when they hear the nature's head toilet composting toilets, they think, oh, it's too much work, it's gross. Sure, yeah. And I hear that all the time. So if you want to even expound on okay. that, it might help out some people. Well, what you do is you want it to separate, okay? So if you'll look right here, when you use, go number one, I guess you would say, if you leave the door closed, it'll automatically go into the front tank. Show you them want what it, they want. You want it separate, okay? okay because yeah. when you mix the two, that's what's bad. Ammonia, right? Yeah. So every day or so, you want to empty your front container. Dilute it heavily with water. You can water your plants, all right? When you go number two, obviously, you open the lever, do your business, mix your peat moss, sawdust, whatever you choose to use. has a mixing handle on the side, and of course, you close it. has an exhaust fan pulling out smell and moisture mainly the moisture, okay, because compost will shrink down a lot. They say for a single person, one to three months is when you'll dump that particular container. Okay. And of course, when you're ready to dump it, you, you unhinge the thing, the whole top will come off, it will unbolt from the floor with two little hinges, and you take it outside and dump it. You don't wash it, you just dump it and bring it back. You want the enzymes and all the bacteria to stay inside. Now with, now with the venting, is it is it a automatic or is it It stays on, passive? Yeah. It, it stays just stays on. on. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a little bitty computer fan. It's so very fans. low draw, absolutely. Okay. Just goes out the wall wherever we choose to put it. So, yeah. All right. We can do other versions. There's a separolette. There's a dry flush, an incinerating toilet. There's all kinds of other yeah, versions oh, yeah. you can do. Yeah. So, this way, of course, you got your pedestal sink. Something big enough and small enough to fit in the space. You want to get too crowded, you know. Over here, we did something unique. This is basically modeled after the Japanese soaking tubs. We wanted to make sure you could have a full bathtub in 30 inches. Mm -hmm. All right, so here's your handle for it up here on the right. Okay, and this is kind of how you get in. You step right here, the chain's out of your way so that you don't have to hit your head, right, when you get in the shower. So right here, so then I would take this, hang it across here, take a shower. Now it also is big enough where you could sit literally all the way down. Even you, being your height. Yeah, even some waterproof bench or something you could bring in Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. I noticed you have these built-in steps. There's almost, is this two of them so you can get up high enough to step over? Well, we did this. Um, this one's more like to hold your soap or some shampoo okay. or whatnot. This step would be to get in. Gotcha. And I basically took Nancy, my girlfriend, she's 5'2", mm -hmm. made her get in. I set the step at that height to make it work. Gotcha. So not for everybody, of course, mm -hmm. but is a unique feature. But of course, the seat you have in there to bathe in could be the reverse step out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And of course, we can do normal showers, normal bathtub that slides under the wall. There's all kinds of ways to do it. I like the lighting up here, too. But you got your rope lighting in here. Of course, it's waterproof, of course. Normal shower valve. This is actual tile as well. Okay, it is. With okay. our steel frames, I don't mind doing the tile work. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it cracking. 
So it's not a special flexible grout, is it traditional grout? It's still grout. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's awesome. right. I mean, his house is steel frame yep. too, which we talk about quite a bit in the other video, but sure. something to add there. Right. Also, we do have a bath fan. Now, I didn't want to mess up my box beam look, right? So my bath fan is actually behind this mirror. Yeah. yeah. So if you hit the switch right there, this one right here, it will come on. So it is stubbed off the wall a little bit to be able to draw the air out of the house. And, and you have direct vents right outside. Primarily a visual thing. Right, because usually yeah. you have to put it up in the ceiling, right? Yeah, well, you're it right. It look very nice in here, in this particular layout. Yeah. So, so, yeah. This is great, man. Uh, thank you again. It's tinyhousechattanooga.com. Yes, sir. For more information, Mike Bedsall, and uh, I'm Derek Dietrichson from RelaxShacks.com. Thanks for watching.